Okay, we are back. I'm very happy to have on the Goldstein on Gelt show, Vicki Robin, who is a writer, a speaker, a prolific social innovator, and she's the co-author of an international bestseller called Your Money or Your Life, Transforming Your Relationship with Money and Achieving Financial Independence. Now, Vicki, in your book, you talk a lot about what you refer to as life energy. Why is that important for achieving financial independence? Thanks for having me on, Doug. Yeah, life energy is our term for money. And basically because the money you spend represents the hours of your life that you invested in getting it. So translating money, which is pieces of paper and metal or your, your credit card or just little electronic blips, translating money, which from which is something abstract, really, and really not related to you, into hours of your life, something you can feel. When you think about your life, you think, well, part of my life, I'm making money, but I'm also a husband or a father or a brother or a mother or a son. I'm also interested in puppetry. I'm interested in art. I'm interested in going to museums. I want to travel the world. There's lots of aspects to you. And the money system tends to have you define yourself by what you do for money. So thinking of money as life energy, you start to think about who am I? You know, where do I want to invest the hours of my life? And so if I think about money as my life energy, I think, okay, how can I get the maximal amount of pleasure and utility out of the money that I have so that I can liberate my time to do many things that I care about that have nothing to do with money? So, so making that translation... Yeah, go ahead. So a lot of the times when people are spending money, they're actually trading their life energy for something else, which when you put it in those terms actually makes it a little bit more frightening, no? Well, you could you could say it's frightening or you could say it's sobering or you could say it's liberating. It depends on your perspective. But, you know, you're standing there in front of the big screen TV. You know, you've already got a TV. It's just not the, you know, upgraded, super duper, larger than life TV. And you're thinking, oh, I want that TV because the whole store is designed for you to want that TV. And then you start to think, well, number one, I already have a TV. Number two, you know, given that I'm trading my hours of my life for money and that uh, I don't know, I'm not, I can't speak in in, in your currency, but, you know, let's say for in the United States, let's say I'm earning $20 an hour and that's a thousand dollar TV. Well, that's in a lot of hours of my life. I'm going to have to invest in that TV. So you think, ah, am I going to get enough pleasure from this TV, from the extra six inches of width to justify the six days at work? I'm going to have to invest in order to get it. So once you have that translation, it's not scary. It's liberating because you think, well, I already have a TV and those six inches are not worth a week or two of my life. Uh, so that's the that's the calculation that starts to happen so that it's spending money goes from being a, a uh, reward for your hard work to a representation of your hard work. It goes into being something that helps you to preserve the hours of your life for what's important. So this is almost sounds a little bit philosophical, yet in the book, you're, you seem very practical, meaning you talk about the importance of keeping track of every cent that comes into or out of your life, uh, you know, budgeting and keeping on top of this. How do the two of them go together? Because frankly, a lot of people say, you know, when you get down to the nitty gritty like that, you kind of take the fun out of life. Oh, it, it, yeah. Well, the fun comes, number one, yes, it's philosophical. There's a philosophical ground, but it's a very practical nine-step program that helps you actually translate this idea that my life is more than just being a working slave. You know, I have more to myself than just this. Uh, so it helps you translate these sort of values of simplicity and frugality and, and um, personal growth into something very concrete, like you know, what, what, what piece of meat do I buy? What can do I buy it? And it's not, it can be a little obsessive in the beginning because you're really paying attention at a level you've never paid attention before. But what happens is that it becomes habitual. You start to people who do this approach for six months, they track every penny, they evaluate each month, how much they're spending on each, you know, spending category. You do this for six months 
Uh, and the, the hardest part really, the hardest part is to begin any program of change. The hardest part is to begin. The second hardest part is to set up your system so that you can automatically observe these changes uh, within six months, people normally drop about 20 to 25 percent of their expenses. Very often, they don't even know what they used to spend the money on. In other words, that's how much unconsciousness we have about our money. That's amazing so how much people can really be overspending and, and, and not even notice it. We're talking with Vicki Robin. Right. We're talking with Vicki Robin, who is the author of the international bestseller, Your Money or Your Life. And we've been talking about how the two kind of go together. Vicki, in the second half of our discussion, let's see if we can cover a little bit of what the book is. Now, you mentioned before there are nine steps. Let's see if we can get through, well, we probably won't even get through one. But if people want to walk away with a concrete step of where they should start what would you say is the number one step today that people could take towards becoming financially independent? I will, I'll go over briefly steps two, three, and four, because I think those are the key of the book. Step two is understanding that money is your life energy. You start to track your money, not as a sort of punishment, like, you know, sort of a little anal punishment, but as a as a question, like, where is my life going? So you track the money that you're spending and tracking itself actually brings attention at the moment of spending. So if you have to write down, or if you have to develop some system for seeing every time money leaves your wallet or every time money leaves your bank account, you're going to make a little entry into your record system. That entry by itself will eliminate some of your spending because you're actually paying attention. It's an intention, attention tool. So you track your money, and then at the end of each month, you sort your money that you spent out into categories. It could be um, categories like food I eat at home, food I eat in restaurants, the coffee I get on the way to work. You could have categories, you sort out categories, because the question is, how am I spending my life energy? So you look in each of these categories, and you see, oh, I say the most important thing is my life is my kids. But actually, I spent like three years of my life buying a new car when I already <laughs> had a car. Right. So, so it introduces into the process, the unconscious process that is really, really aided and abetted by advertising and the whole culture of money. It introduces this, these questions that are so powerful. So you just ask, you know, am I going to get enough pleasure to make it worth my, you know, 10, 6, 50 hours, uh, you know, three years to buy that whatever. Okay, so that uh, was step number two. Happy. You're saying that's number, because you skipped number one. That's okay. People have to buy the book. Yes, yeah, number two is you track. <laughs> okay, number step, three. Yeah, number one is, is, is getting yourself a baseline, doing a balance sheet, you know. And so, but many people delay that until later. Where they start is they track their money. And then they evaluate it according to their own spending categories. And they ask themselves, is the life energy I spent to get the that, you know, grab a cup of coffee every day to work, which ends up being 20 hours of my life when you calculate it out. <laughs> With that 20 hours, am I happy I spent those 20 hours of work that way, earning enough to buy a coffee? Right. If not then you adjust, not as a punishment, but as self-preservation. And just That's realizing what you want to do. I think without the knowledge, you have no ability even to decide whether to change things. You know, so many, you know, they talk about dieting when people want to diet. If you simply start by writing down what you eat during the day, it makes, makes it much easier to, to cut down on what you're eating just by keeping track of it. Exactly. Not only is it easier to cut down, you cut down because you don't want somebody watching you eat that piece of chocolate and you're watching yourself now. <laughs> so you start to like not do it because because you've introduced something in your mind called I'm watching you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, give us another step because we're nearly out of time. What else should people do? Well, the second step is the the next step is to evaluate it in spending categories, to observe yourself, say how do I spend money? Keep track for a couple of months and start to sort it out because a lot of people, you know, the budget book says oh, groceries or um, entertainment. But if you sort that out better to like food I buy and cook at home, food I buy and eat in restaurants, you can start to see how your food budget is operating. If you cut, you know, if you take your entertainment budget into, you know, my streaming videos, 
my time going to concerts, which I say, oh, I will love music, but actually all I do is stream videos. You know, so so you, you start to break it down according to categories that make sense for your life, not categories that your financial planner tells you to do. And then you start to become more acquainted with yourself. Like what? Because really the other part of this is not only does it introduce consciousness about how you're spending your money, but it actually introduces the question, what's really important to me? And a lot of people People don't think about that because every day we're given messages about what was supposed to be important to us. So you say, well, what's really important to me? I got a letter recently from a guy who just thanked me up one side and down the other because his calling was to be a librarian. But, you know, he loved books. He loved, you know, children's librarian. He loved kids. But he thought, oh, I can't be a librarian for my life. It's not important enough. I'm not going to make enough money. But he used this approach to basically live within the, happily within the means of a librarian and have a career his whole life that he loves. So that's one way to use it. Another way to use it is I know people who have gotten themselves out of mega debt in three years by like making this goal. Like, is this, you know, cup of coffee on the way to work? Do would I rather have that or would I rather still be paying off my, my debt? I think there are a lot of ways that when people design design their financial life, they're much more able to achieve it rather than just do it randomly. Vicki, we're nearly out of time. There are so many other good steps. What I'd like to do is just suggest that people actually take a look at the book. In the last few seconds, just tell us, I know you're doing a lot more work now. How can people learn more about your, your newest research, your newest books, and uh, and what you're thinking these days? Yeah, so um, at VickiRobin.com, that's very simple, V-I-C-K-I-R-O-B-I-N.com, um, it's it's where I aggregate everything. It's, it's not like a super up-to-date website, but it's great. So my more recent book is called Blessing the Hands That Feed Us, and it's about my investigation of a certain sort of life energy flow, which is called food. And it's really focused on um, sourcing food co- closer to home, developing community food systems, relationships with our farmers, to having a healthier food lifestyle. So that's Blessing the Hands That Feed Us that's um, been out for a year and a half now. And um, I've done a whole bunch of, I've done dialogue work. I've done a lot of different things since the publication of Your Money, Your Life. It's all at VickiRobin.com. Okay, so we will put a link to that as well as links to the book so people can buy it at the show notes of today's show at GoldsteinOnGelt.com. Vicki Robin, thanks so much for your time. Well, thank you for having me. You've been listening to the Goldstein on Gelt Show with money maven Doug Goldstein. Doug's weekly radio show is heard around the world, but if you miss it, you can download the podcast at www.goldsteinongelt.com. The Goldstein on Gelt Show gives you up-to-date financial ideas so you can get on the path to financial freedom. If you'd like your questions answered on the air or off, Send Doug an email to Doug at profile-financial.com. It's your money for your future, so join Doug every week to build your wealth on the Goldstein on Gelt Show.